Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship this morning. There is bad news and there is good news. The bad news, um, especially for those of you anxious to hear uh, Christus this morning, Christus is not singing for worship this morning. Uh, some of you are aware that um, Dr. David Menneke uh, had some back pain spasms after chapel yesterday. Turned out it was kidney stones. Uh, and he uh, went into the hospital yesterday, had a successful procedure today, and will be back in the office within a half an hour. I'm joking about the half an hour. Uh, but uh, some of you know, <laughs> maybe I'm not joking. Uh, if you see him on campus, send him home. Uh, there is a big event here tomorrow, is that right? A choral event? The event is Sunday. So he's hoping to be back for that. Um, but treat him kindly. Tell him to go home. Tell him to go uh, rest. Uh, so that's the bad news. The good news, there's a plan B uh, that was put in place a very short time ago. So blessings to us as we go through worship today. We, we are on the verge of Lent. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. This Sunday is, is uh, Transfiguration Sunday. And so for me, and I think for a lot of us, it's, it's a wonderful time of year. Uh, we sing a hymn uh, today that is from LSB number 845 that prepares us for the gospel. Before we do so, let's rise and greet one another and welcome one another to worship in the name of Christ. chapter 5, and uh, I invite you uh, to read um, the quotes of you've heard that it was said. There are two of them, so I'll read the rest of it, but when we get to an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and then in the next a couple of frames there's another, you have heard that it was said, I invite you to read that short quote that follows. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5. You have heard that it was said, together, and I have heard 
Do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. Thank you, Devin. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, together, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Matthew writes the gospel today um, to love your enemies and to pray for those who persecute you. And then he has this phrase, um, you saw it just a second ago, don't even the tax collectors do the same? Do you remember what Matthew did uh, for a living before he became a follower of Jesus? Thank you. Jordan's pre-sem. He knows these things. Matthew's a tax collector. And he puts himself in this category of the common or the shallow. Don't even the tax collectors do that? Pray for those who are your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If someone sues you for your coat, give them your outer coat, your inner coat. Give them something else as well. For don't even the Gentiles uh, do the bare minimums. Matthew writes, this gospel today is a crushing gospel for me. It closes with, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Hip, hip. I don't think so either. Uh, the, The number five is important for Matthew, if you're not aware of that. Matthew writes, I've mentioned this briefly before, Matthew includes uh, five women in the genealogy of Jesus. How many of you love to study genealogies in Scripture? If you don't, check out the genealogy in Matthew. There are five women there. Four of them have amazing stories, better than soap operas, better than reality television. These women have incredible stories. And then there's one last woman who's mentioned in the genealogy of Matthew. The last one is the Virgin Mary. There's four with incredible color, incredibly colorful stories in the family and the history of Jesus Christ. Matthew includes these five women. There are five dreams in the Christmas story. And then most of you know, many of you know, there are five major teaching sections to the Gospel of Matthew. There are five narratives, and then there are five monologues. Most would suggest Uh, that five is important to Matthew because of the Old Testament, um, first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. This is an important number to the Jews, important number to God's people. And Matthew, in my view and in many uh, people's view, would include this number over and over and over again uh, to remind us of where we're coming from. Christ is the fulfillment of this Old Testament, uh, this First Testament. If you were at the Lost and Found concert on Monday, we don't want to offend the First Testament by calling it, by calling it old. Um, yet this gospel this morning that we have today from Matthew chapter 5, for me, uh, when I was a teenager, this is when my heart jumped alive uh, for Scripture. I read the first monologue, the first of five monologues that Matthew has in his gospel. And it has all these statements that are really crushing. If your right hand causes you to sin, what does Jesus say in the gospel? God, often we all be walking around without fingers, right? 
If your eye causes you to sin, what are you supposed to do? Pluck it out. Hip, hip. Uh, me too. It closes, our gospel closes today, not the end of the first monologue, but the gospel closes today by these daunting words. Jesus says, Be perfect, therefore, as your Father in heaven is perfect. I would imagine that many Christians around the world, like me when I read these um, as a teenager, were crushed. How is this possible? Our theme for the year is walk in love from Ephesians chapter 5. And if you read the Lutheran Study Bible, Matthew chapter 5, this very verse that we read this morning, is cross-referenced to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 says, Therefore be imitators of... Pastor Tom, please don't. No, be imitators of God. What a crushing encouragement. Because Scripture also tells us that we all have fallen short of the glory of God. And when we, we hear words like, be imitators of God, and when we hear Jesus say, be perfect, therefore, as your Father in heaven is perfect, uh, we could look in a mirror and say, this is not me. Thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy in my life. There are many, and I have come to this point, and I would suggest probably uh, most Lutheran pastors may come to this point, even though there are other opinions, that possibly Jesus is talking about himself in the Sermon on the Mount, and all these incredibly high standards that he himself, and only he, is able to fulfill. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Uh, But then as we gather before the cross and as we prepare ourselves for this wilderness, we're in Matthew chapter 5 today. Sunday's uh, a week, uh, Ash Wednesday reading is Matthew chapter 4. These Lenten uh, readings of the wilderness. We go back a phrase and he's in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, does not eat and comes out and then gives this lesson through the clarity of thought. I picture Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 giving this Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, and you have heard that it was said, but I tell you, and then these other phrases, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. And I kind of picture in my theological mind Jesus putting a huge mirror in front of himself and all of these people around him, and he's given the sermon. And it's a reflection of Christ alone. And so for me, the Sermon on the Mount and this journey of Lent is not a journey of a law that crushes us forever, but it's a journey of the law that crushes us and points our feet to the cross. For Christ is the one who takes his hands and has no need to cut them off but they are pierced for my transgressions and pierced for our transgressions so that we could be called the sons and daughters of God. Uh, And so I share, in place of Christus Chorus uh, this morning, I share a song uh, that I shared in this building about about 10 years ago. It's a song from my own heart. It is is a a pre-Lenten song. It's an Alleluia song, but it's a song in response uh, to forgiveness, to being crushed by the law, and the journey that, cause, uh, that, that causes our reflection. So I invite you to sing it with me. Um, it's one of those songs that I, I tried to write the notes out, but honestly, it's, um, I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure out my own song and notate it so you, could, so you could sing along with me. But it's simple enough, at least the chorus, that I think you could sing along with me. So I'll sing the chorus, and then I'll invite you to sing along. The verses are very easy as well, and I, I invite you to reflect... Matthew chapter 5, the law in our lives and the journey uh, that God has called us on to be forgiven uh, because of his hands on the cross. Touch my eyes and I can see Touch my ears, a symphony sounds sweetly in the heavens, singing praises to the name. 
Touch my tongue and I can talk. Touch my feet, I'm walking on a journey of forgiveness. Hallelujah. 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 I'm on a journey of forgiveness. Hallelujah. I know that's a lot, but I invite you to sing with me. Try it. walk in love, and are called to imitate Christ and called to be perfect, uh, we also admit our faults and our failures. So I invite you, as we pray, uh, to be thinking of the hands that are broken and pierced uh, so that our hands uh, might not be cut off and that we ourselves might not be cut off from the grace and truth uh, found in Christ. Please rise for prayer. And I do invite you um, uh, to share prayers. We'll pray for David Menneke, who I mentioned at the beginning I went into the hospital last night uh, with a kidney stone, had a successful procedure this morning. Uh, And and as I mentioned earlier, we'll probably be back in the office within 20 minutes. If you see him, send him home uh, to rest. Also, we include Janine Hall, Kevin Hall's wife, who fell and broke her wrist. Uh, She's also a church musician, and so that's a a big deal for the Hall family and for Janine. And I do invite you to share prayers. uh, And if you feel led to uh, share, Lord, in your mercy, and we'll... 
uh, sur- surround that prayer with your prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and ask for your presence and your blessing as we be uh, again on uh, this journey next week on Ash Wednesday through the wilderness uh, to the waters of baptism and to the empty cross, the empty tomb. We thank you, Lord, that our hands are not cut off and our eyes are not plucked out. For we are made whole because you are able and you are worthy and you are sinless and you have made a decision to change places and make us, though we are sinners, saints. Lord, in your mercy, we ask your blessings on David as he is in the hospital recovering. Give him rest and give him patience with the recovery process. We ask your blessings on Catherine as she manages uh, things as David is in the hospital. Lord, in your mercy. We pray also for Janine Hall this morning as she has fallen and broken her wrist. We ask your blessings, Lord, on this long recovery as well. Uh, We pray for Kevin uh, and Kevin's children, Janine's children, uh, during this time. Lord, in your mercy. We bring before you, Lord Jesus, this day the prayers of your people, spoken and in silence. We ask your blessings, Lord, over faculty, students, and staff uh, in this um, mid-time of the semester. We pray uh, that you would be uh, with stressed out students, uh, that your presence would guide, and that clarity of mind might be found through your cross. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray, Lord Jesus, for those students going through interview processes and uh, deliberating uh, where they will be in a few brief months uh, in ministry. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, Lord Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, you who taught us to pray. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.